All right, more questions. All right, more Q&As with you guys. This one is from one of our channel member. Thank you all the members for supporting the channel, by the way. I hope you enjoy the exclusive content. This one is from Hudson Jones. There's a lot of questions here. <laughs> Let's try. Number one, what are some of the tactics you use to control bass lines? It depends, of course, if it's a real bass player playing an instrument or if it's a programmed synth bass line. The first one is always usually more difficult, so to speak, to control compared to the second. Uh, scenario, of course, but if it's the first one, of course, everything starts with a good performance. Sounds and dynamics are in the hand and uh, a good instrument as well, because some instruments, if they're not that great or they have uh, not a great setup or not great pickups, they can have more resonance notes than others. And those resonances can be very difficult to control because they are way exaggerated. In this case, but this goes also for the synth program bass lines, the first line of defense, so to speak, is a volume automation. Volume automation, volume automation, volume automation. I learned this uh, at a very early stage of my career, listening to Andy Wallace mixes and the way he rides bass tracks. And, you know, that's your first line of attack, defense, call it the way you want to control them. Because even if the performance itself is well played, even if the instrument is well balanced or you have a programmed synth, the problem with bass uh, many times is that some notes will pop up more and some will kind of get buried depending on what else is going on in the mix. If there's a bassy synth or a vocal, so it could be guitars, could be a busy pattern on the drums, there's a lot of variables as to why you could lose a, a bass note or a bass note could be perceived louder even if nominally they are at the same level. If we take a look at 808s and, and um, bassline program, synth bassline in general, you don't have many problems in in writing a performance that nominally and even visually on the waveform is perfectly consistent. But then when you open the mix, you realize this note, why I hear this note higher than the other and I'm losing power here. And this is also why it's extremely important to have a good monitoring system, because one thing that often happens in, in home studios is your low end is the first thing that is messed up, especially in small rooms. We talked about this many times. You know, the, the monitors fire in the walls behind you, the waveforms comes back and they meet at one point in the room. So these, these are the speakers, this is your back wall, right? The waveforms do this, come back while the speakers are still firing music and they meet and the, and the spot where they meet, they are slightly out of phase because these are delayed, right? And that creates a null most of the time. It could be a dip depending on the room modes and everything. And usually it happens always in small rooms at the listening position. It's like a curse. So this is also why some people have troubles getting a good, solid, consistent low end from home mixes, because this is the first culprit. You know, this is the, the main problem uh, that many people have. Like, for example, you usually get this new anywhere around 120 to 90 slash, I want to say 80. OK, so it's the power range. And if you have a null there, let's say a 90 or 85, when the root note is there of the bass, you either don't hear it, so you boost it, or you hear it too much, so you cut it and you reduce the level. And I'm not talking about EQ, I'm just talking when you ride the levels, right? And you will ride the levels if you have a null or a dip. But the problem is, outside of your studio, you won't have that. And that's when you hear the mixes in the car and they blow the speakers up, or they are super thin and you wonder why your bass you know, is not heard. This is to say that in order for you to tackle uh, how dynamically control bass lines, you need to hear them properly across the entire sub and, and low range. Okay, that makes sense, I hope. But yes, feather riding is one thing. If, for example, as happens often, you get a not great performance, or maybe the rig they recorded wasn't that great, or maybe you just have a DI and the instrument itself doesn't sound that great. And, you know, if you take the DI, 
That happens very often. This is the plugin that I prefer for this and is um, Amplitude, uh, the, the base rigs, the especially the Ampex. If you start scrolling through the rigs, you will find at some point one combination of head and cabinet that will somewhat even out already naturally the performance. And this is a great help that that gives you a, a much, much better starting point. I can't count the, how many times that plugin uh, saved me when I received tracks and the bass was like badly recorded or the performance wasn't that great. It can literally save the day. And after that, and this goes for both played and synced and programmed. Before we continue, if you enjoyed the videos, please subscribe and hit the notification button. And if you really wanna learn how to mix and master professionally, click the join button down here, become a Mixbus TV member, access the already big and always growing library of full mixing courses, start to finish, mastering courses on many different genres and a lot more. If you like the video, you wanna support the channel, either grab some merch or use the super thanks down here. Let's go back to the video. Saturation will also help you. And it, it might not seem like it because a lot of people think of saturation as a, an enhancement, right? Oh, to make it, you know, sound uh, more intelligible in small speakers, which is true. It is an enhancement, is it can make it better and everything. But saturation, especially if you use like a tape emulator, a good tape emulator, but not necessarily, even a transformer emulation can do that, uh, will naturally even out both the dynamic of it and the harmonic content because again, some notes based on what's around the bass in the mix can be perceived louder or lower based on the rest of the harmonic content, meaning other instruments and how they're mixed and everything. So when you enrich an element, in this case a bass, it will of course be more intelligible and more even as in the perception of that element across the mix and across all notes. Of course, then there's the basics, right? There's the basic compression. It, this is what it's for. You control dynamics, especially if we talk about electronic music, you can side chain your kick as you know, everybody knows. What I prefer in this case is unless I want an obvious pumping effect, I just side chain the low end of the bass where the kick hits and leave the rest alone. It's a more transparent way to kind of make space, but not in the sense of making a puzzle. Where, where one ends, the other begins. You know, a lot of people make this mistake. We talked about it, like mixing is not a puzzle. It's called mixing because things have to mix, you know, with each other, not cut and then end and start. Otherwise the mix sound unglued. Also pay attention, not all bases need the full extended deep sub range. Okay, sometimes depending on the instrument, depending on the sound, it can be detrimental because um, if you remember some of my videos when we talked about kicks, right, uh, especially for rock, I mentioned here and there, sometimes I get sent a kick that is too slow, so to speak. So it's not because he's out of time, but because a deep low end, it's exciting, but it comes with a side effect, so to speak, that doesn't fit any genre. Okay, that's why an 808 is okay on hip hop, but on some other genre is not. Because it comes with a certain drag, feeling wise, so to speak, when you have a really extended low end, at the expenses of the punch and the aggressiveness of a higher, slightly higher range bass or kick. I hope this answered the question. If you guys have more questions for the Q&A, leave it in the comments down below. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you haven't already, and see you next time. Pretty well, but I can say you can't.